The long-awaited summer months have arrived and as the final push continues to complete the roof and facades of the Eastern Pavilion, a discovery in the chateau walls forces us to find a new home for some new arrivals to the chateau family. What are you doing? <laughs> when Pernon was constructed in the 18th century, the domain was designed to be very much a self-sustainable domain where all the requirements for the family and the huge village of staff that supported the family here were produced on site. And all through the domain, we find traces of this. And here we have found traces of beekeeping at the chateau. So these are original hand woven beehives. They're called skeps that were made from dried straw and then woven tightly to create a comb form that is then placed upside down. And there's a small entrance here that allowed safe passage for the bees in and out of the hive. They would have then tried to attract a wild swarm into the skep and once the queen is captured and placed in the skep, the swarm will follow and immediately they will start to create the honeycomb from the top and the sides of the skep. We've also found lots of more modern beekeeping equipment here telling us that beekeeping has always been a really important part of life here at Pernod. Now with these skeps, unfortunately, when it was time to harvest the honey, the harvest was actually a very traumatic process for the bees and the hive. And the hive was normally killed off in order to harvest the honey and the beeswax. So thankfully now we have much more modern ways of extracting honey and producing honey. And I actually come from a family of keen beekeepers. My memories of summer in Australia was always bee stings and my father harvesting the honey from his beehives. And my younger brother is also a very keen beekeeper. So thankfully I have them to teach me the art of beekeeping. And we are finally going to reintroduce a queen and her court to Pernod. When the bees put wax on this, they'll fill in those little gaps there. Okay. When you place this inside and turn it, you see them, see how it moves? Nice work! Nice one. So it's been a month since we found the bees in the wall of the chateau. The scaffolding allowed us to get sort of close to see where they were but actually it wasn't close enough to get a good look at it. So our stonemakers actually extended the scaffolding out so that we could see where the entry point for the bees is. And it looked like they were coming in an old uh, pipe. Yeah, main pipe or... kind of fed up 45 degrees in and then 45 degrees up. So we kind of traced that line to try and see where it might come out and found a whole pile of concrete against the wall in yeah. this room. So maybe it had been previously a drain, like there might have been a sink in there or something. Yeah, so we're on the second floor, we're on the Jersey Metage, so um, there's no bathrooms or plumbing up here, which is sort of a bit, a bit mysterious as to why there's actually this drain here and then why it was cemented and then bricked in. <laughs> yeah, really, really. <laughs> One of those like mysteries. Anyway, Tobes has been chipping away at the cement, removed all the cement. Yeah, removed the cement, found a, a layer of brickwork which is also cemented in uh, and then we removed a couple of bricks and you could see some very old honeycomb in there. You can hear some bees. So now we've got two bricks free, we're going to get the smoker going, go in there and see if we can calm them down, remove some more bricks and see if any of that hive can be taken out. Okay, and I have to say also we're a little worried about the health of the hive. So they seemed to be, when we put the flow hive up on the scaffolding um, a, about a month ago, the hive was really, really yeah, healthy. Yeah, there were lots coming and going. And it seems to be a lot quieter. And yeah. also we had this mass uh, of, of dead bees actually on the Grand Escalier. And so we couldn't work out, first, we don't know if they're the same bees. Secondly, we couldn't work out where they were coming into the chateau and thirdly why all of them died yeah. sort of in one... It was all a mystery. Yeah. But hopefully if we can get them out of here, if there is some problem in there, they might have more of a chance. 
Yeah. We get them down into the potager where they've got plenty of food and yeah. maybe give them some sugar water. So, what, so we're going to try and take the honeycomb out that's there and pop it into the flow hive? Yeah, we'll try and cut the honeycomb out with minimal disturbance, try and move whatever bees we can into the hive as well and hopefully get the queen in that process. Yeah. Because as long as we get the queen in there, um, there's a good chance that the rest of the hive, that they'll accept that as the new hive. Is there a risk that by disturbing them, we'll encourage them to swarm? Possibly. Okay. Yep. There's also a risk that, unfortunately, that the hive won't survive being moved. They say, or some people say it's about 50-50, whether they'll oh, wow. survive the transition. Okay. But um, it's not sustainable for them in the wall in no. a way, so this is kind of the best chance they have. Okay. okay. So, we're, A, we're going to try and save the hive, and B, we're going to try and relocate them to their lovely new home in the big chateau. The very own chateau. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fingers crossed. Let's hope. Let's hope that Let's our hope. bees are safely relocated to their chateau, uh, out of our chateau into their own chateau. Into the flow hive chateau. <laughs> Tobias is just removing the last pieces of bricks to see if we can actually access. There we go. <laughs> no, 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 that's so amazing. That okay. is, yeah, that's a proper hive. Wow, okay, so basically, this is super exciting. So we've just turned the torch on in there, and there is old honeycomb, and then there is fresh honeycomb, and we can see lots of bees, which means that our hive is still alive. So I have to say, I'm so relieved. Yeah, it is quite I'm quite alive. nervous, actually. And quite healthy. The noise of the hive is so so intense. And the, we can see a lot of honey in there. You see those capped over bits? Yeah. That's brood, so that's, that's, bit, that's babies. Which means there's an active queen in there, which is good. Which means that the queen is laying, which means that the, um, the hive is healthy and growing. And so hopefully we can get it out and into a more sustainable home. My God, it just keeps going. Look at that honeycomb. Absolutely amazing. I've taken a little bit of honeycomb just for us to, to show the others and maybe taste a bit of the honey and see what it tastes like at the moment. But the good news is there was lots of honey in there, lots of brood, really healthy hive. Way, way bigger than I expected. Like just It was enormous, wasn't it? Massive. Um, and the bees were just so so good. Uh, so I hope I hope they take. But we'll go try some honey and see, yeah. see what we're in store for. Very nice, wow. So how long have we had the hive, do you reckon now, Dad? So they've had three weeks to build the, rebuild the hive. They should be strong enough for us to disrupt them and, and reorganise them. And the goal today is to move the super that we've got sitting on top of the to get, super. To get rid of that super. And, and put it with the brood, uh, make that the brood box at the bottom. And go queen spotting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on a mission to find her. I was all gung-ho about finding the queen and now I'm like petrified. Right. Wow. Can't see her there. Yeah. There, there she is. is, there she is. There she is, we've got her. There she is. Oh my gosh, okay, we know we've got her. There's not a lot of brood. There's not a lot of capping happening in, in the bottom there. Yep. Pernon's busy bees. Well, these are Pernon's very, very busy bees. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, queen excluder. Bring up the flow hive. Yep. Okay, just put it on crooked and then swing it around so you don't squash them underneath. There you go, girls. Your new flow hive home. Let's put it on, put it on that way and it sweeps them off. Plug in. And the plug. And the roof. And the roof. So there's two things that really excited me. The first is that we saw the queen. Very Identified her. First time I've seen one, so yep. that was pretty amazing. And then the second was it felt like they were really quickly starting to work in the flow hive. They get back into work straight away and repairing the damage to the combs and eating all the spare wax and honey that may have, may have spilled. They don't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. Barker, folks, landscape <laughs> garden guru, and Ian actually has flow hives in Australia, so he um, has offered to help me today to have a look into the hive. I'm a bit worried because it seems quite quiet, Ian. It does seem quiet, and they were busy about two or three days ago, and given the, the warmth of the day, there should be more activity, so they may have swarmed. I'll be so devastated. <laughs> There's a bird sitting on top of the hive at the moment. That doesn't seem like a good plan. Um, but we're going to open the top of the super, see if there's any activity in there, and then maybe look in the brood box as well. We'll definitely look in the brood box. Okay. We'll, know, we'll know more from the brood box than we will okay. from the super. All right, let's... We hope. <laughs> let's see how we go. They're all there. They're working. Ian. What's well, good? That looks amazing. Look at you girls go. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. Look at that, it's fresh honey in there. We won't have a honey harvest this year because they'll na now need all this for winter. Yeah, so there's absolutely nothing in this one. Feel that, that's so light. Yeah. Like that's... A few round bees. Look at zero. Yeah. Maybe they're just starting in the bottom. So there's a little bit of honey coming on this there's side. There's a lot on the other side. And yeah, that's good. Eat up, girls. Should we go queen spotting? Yeah. Okay. Why does the smoke work to pacify them? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. So it, it they eat and then they get sleepy. Oh, See, okay. look at all these big boys. The drones? Yeah. I get nervous. But that's good. Is it? Well, that's all honey. When we pulled these out um, a couple of months ago, they were absolutely laden with brood. Okay, how does one do this, Ian? What's the trick? I, I Stay tend calm. to, oh, yeah, but I tend to lift one side okay. and finger, and then I lift the other side and I sort of just put that on there and then that allows me to then pick it up. Okay. You left or right handed? Left handed. Yep, so pick. And if you get your fingers under that hook so you don't drop and then you're all done. It's very heavy. Yeah, it's because there's so much honey. Is she in that hive of activity just to my left? She normally just spreads a path. Yeah. Grip the fingers underneath. Yeah, and then use this to put it on yep and then you put that in your pocket okay and then if it's heavy you can just put it on the edge i'm trying not to be scared <laughs> is it been on be on this side that he's 
completely covered in uh, pollen. <laughs> really? Yeah, and yellow pollen. So clearly going to the sunflowers. Oh, but there's one there with very yellow pollen plants. And they should be loving the sunflowers. No queen here? No queen. Oh, he is too. Look at him. <laughs> Guilty. So the good news is they hadn't swarmed. I don't think they've swarmed because you would have seen There's a whole a lot, lot of um, queen cells. But I don't think they've swarmed, but I'm surprised and I don't have the, I don't quite know why there's not cap cells. Mm -hmm. um, but there appears to be larvae, there's heaps of honey, there's certainly lots of bees yeah. who look fairly calm and happy. Yeah. So. With the flow super, even though there was a lot of honey in sort of the first three or four or four frames, it, it won't be honey that we'll harvest this year, will it? I wouldn't think so, no. Wouldn't Unless something remarkable happens in the next three or four weeks. Um, and again, I, I, I would want to ask some questions as to why there's no cap cells. Yeah, okay. Like, we'll ask the guys at Flow. <laughs> I think we need more information. And get some info. All right. Good fun though, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's just like, it's like entering another world. And, you know, for me, uh, like I was saying when we were out there, as soon as you open the hive and start hearing the hum of it, it's just got this effect on me that is hard to describe. It feels really like, yeah, like you're really entering in a completely different world. Yeah, and it feels like you're you're part, like I, I was never into bees. I was always quite frightened of bees. And now it's this, some people around me sort of explain how to stay calm and not worry about it. Now I just feel really peaceful and calm yeah. and move slowly and everything slows down. Whereas in my normal day-to-day -day work, I move in a rush. Yeah. Whereas suddenly when you're playing with the bees, it's just calm. Everything and, stops and... Yeah, it's, um, and it's But fun. I was, yeah, you were, uh, that was a lesson for me today about how calm you were. Well, that was... Because I can get a bit like panicky and yeah and um, they can smell it and yeah they you know so I find the calmer I am the calmer the bees are I don't get stung as often whereas at the start I used to get stung like two or three times every time I'd open a hive yeah whereas now I got stung once today but it doesn't seem to phase me as much yeah okay um but they're real they seem to very happy calm yeah. bees so uh it's different from one hive to an X you can you can see which are the happy bees and calm and the ones that are At least we have a happy hive. Well, I think you've got a happy hive and they're certainly not aggressive, so. I mean, they should be happy. They've got the chateau as a background, sunflower fields all around oh, them. It's, it's a, I went for a drive last night and I kept stopping taking photos of the sunflowers and I couldn't it's help but smile, but it? it's incredible countryside. Yeah, beautiful part of the world. Thanks, Ian. That's all right, it was fun.